We're in Tunisia right now, and it is really windy out. I've seen it up to 35 knots right now, and we're quarantined on the hard. And so we're just hanging out through this storm. So let's go back in time to when I sailed across the Adriatic Sea from Dubrovnik, Croatia to Othoni, Greece. The sail was 182 nautical miles, and I was very excited to be leaving Croatia because we had spent six months in Croatia, and so we had overstayed our visa. We put the dinghy on the deck because we did not want another incident where we lost the dinghy off the back. We headed out towards Othoni. The plan was to turn on the engine and motor for the first three, four hours and then let out the sails and start sailing the rest of the way. But, alas, because we were breaking the law by leaving without notifying anybody, the Coast Guard came and made us turn around and go back to Port Gruge. 10 miles offshore, the police just came and told us we need to turn around and go to the port because we didn't check out from the country and apparently you're not allowed to leave the country unless you check out. The reason we didn't check out is because, well, well, because we've been in the country for six months. So that took our starting point from 10 a.m. to now about 5 p.m. So it was at least a six hour delay, seven hour delay, but in reality, it was more like an eight or nine hour delay because of the hour and a half, two hours that it took to regain the distance that we had already covered. $300 poorer and we're all set. We paid a ticket for trying to leave without checking out. That was 1,333 kuna or like 200 something dollars. And then 333 kuna a piece for overstaying visa. But according to them, now we have no problems with Croatia. We could come back and have zero issues. And now we have been politely told to leave straight away, immediately. <laughs> we ended up actually leaving around sunset instead of mid-morning. And the reason we were planning on leaving in mid-morning was so that while we were sailing, since there was only two of us, we would only end up doing one overnight period. And our plan was to do three hour shifts during the day and then two hour shifts at night. In that way, we would be able to get through the night a bit easier. But now since we are leaving in the evening instead of the mid-morning, we are going to potentially have to do two full nights at sea, which is the two of us. So we set out. We put up the mainsail and we tried to sail, but the swell was coming from the northwest and it was just a bit too much for the lack of wind that was around. And so we were moving about three knots. Ripping and a roaring at a whopping three point. 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, 2.1 knots. The adventure begins when the first thing goes wrong. I don't know who said that, but it's true. That's when it starts, because before that, it's just fun, I guess. I don't know, it's, it's, it's not a full experience unless there is some sort of difficulty. Made it through the night, a bit of a rough, night last night the wind didn't show up until around 4 a.m. and then it really showed up and it was blowing around 20 knots and so I put out the Genoa just to start with to see how it was going and then yeah picked up and put out the main and the jib and was able to sail lots of swell maybe two meters we've been getting hit kind of cattywampus with the swell and so that makes it nice and uncomfortable I've been having the joy of being nauseous anytime I look at a screen, whether it's the camera or the phone for navigation. So that's been great. Also was just getting nauseous um, setting the sails. <laughs> that was really great. Uh, luckily laying down and breathing uh, works it out for me, but yeah, it's still not fun. The, the wind and the swell gets funneled down in between Albania and Italy and, and so by the time we we're around Albania the wind and the swell were right behind us and we we're sailing wing on wing which is fantastic and the most comfortable way to sail. It's 
It's about 3 p.m. here on sailing vessel Adianrod. We're about 130 miles deep into this sail, and we have about 60 miles to go before we get to Greece. Right now we're surfing waves at eight, sometimes even nine knots. So if we are able to keep up that kind of speed, then we can get to the island before midnight, which would be amazing, considering um, if we average five knots, which is what I plan for, then we'll get there at like five or six a.m. Casual point of sale, no more seasickness, feel good. Um, gonna eat some food, haven't eaten all day. According to the maps, we're technically sailing over an old minefield. The area is safe for surface travel, but it is not safe to anchor there because it has not all been cleared from mines that were set back in World War I and World War II. This giant red ship was heading straight towards us, and we're like, we're in a, a, a minefield right now. What is this boat doing? It then turns out it passed behind us, and it was just a ferry, so there was, there was no problems. <laughs> when you're out, in the beginning of a day and a half long sail and it's uncomfortable and you're like is it going to be uncomfortable for this whole sail am i crazy that i'm out here sailing i'm nauseous i don't actually want to be out here anymore but then life changes and it goes from being uncomfortable to being the most magical thing you've ever experienced the movement of the ocean and the fact that you're on your way to a new country by the power of the wind. You're not burning any fossil fuels, you're just sailing. It's existence pushing you to a new location. And you turn on autopilot and now the boat's steering itself and so you're, <laughs> you're getting to a new land just carried by technology. You're completely dependent on it. You're not dependent. You're completely in flow, so to speak. You're completely in rhythm with existence that it is literally the driving force that is propelling you forward and getting you to where you need to be. And so those moments make the uncomfortable moments worth it. Existence itself blessing you, I guess. It's about 11 p.m. We're making way. Tara woke me up at 10. I slept from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tara's asleep right now. When we have two or three miles left, I'll wake up Tara. Until then, watch. Beautiful night, good weather, good wind. All's well on Adian Run. It's through discomfort that you find your own character and it's through discomfort that you develop your own character because people think, and I mean, I've been guilty of this, you think you're capable of things and then you get put in that situation and you find out whether or not you're capable. And sometimes you're not capable and that's good to know because you don't want to think you're capable of something that you're not capable of. And it's also good to know that you are capable of things because you need to know where your limits are because if you don't, then you end up arrogant and that's a recipe for disaster. We have all of these fantastic technologies and all of this amazing comfort that our forefathers set up for us. And we end up entitled and think that we did it. And it's like, no, no, we didn't make any of this. We just get to enjoy it. And so in my mind, I think it's important to go through uncomfortable situations so that you have gratitude for what we have. It's intention and obstacle. Your intention is to go from one place to another, and then the obstacle is the discomfort in the whole process. And it is the obstacle that creates, one, the story, and two, the meaning. Because if there is no obstacle, there is no story. And there is no meaning if there is no story. sailed to Greece. <laughs> Did it! Something like 33 hours total, 182 nautical miles. Almost two days since we've been on land. Oh, solid ground! Oh, after such a rocky sail. How does it feel? 
solid. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe and share this video with a friend so that we can um, get this channel really rolling. Big love. See you around.